Hello dear gamers, Yorkfield here and today we are back for more Doki Doki Literature Club. So last time we wrote another poem and we but we did not show it to the club right yet. We had some issues with Sayori, I think. She hit her head and we had to help her. And not gonna lie, you probably didn't notice, but the thing that we said to each other did touch me a little bit. Now we're gonna show it to all the Doki Doki members. Oh, sorry, the Literature Club members, excuse me. So, without further ado, let's continue. Let's go. Okay, so we left last time at this page we, where we had to show the poems to everyone in the club. On the last poem, we started with Sayuri, since, you know, she's my best friend in the game. So, I'm gonna first share it with Yuri this time to change a little bit. Um, are you still mad at me? For disrespect to Natsuki yesterday. Because I'm reading this poem. Now I know why you got mad at me. Because you... You prefer her writing over mine. That's not really true. Meaning when I disrespected her, I disrespected you too, didn't I? Oh no. Yuri, you might be reading into this a little too much. How could I be so stupid? I always let these things happen. Whenever I think before I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. But if I speak without thinking, the things I want to keep inside come out and make people hate me. So please don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monica wants, but it's not fair when you could be enjoying your time with Natsuki and Sayori. Yuri, please, it makes it easier for me if you don't express any concern. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. Yuri smiles sadly and puts her head down on the desk. I'm frustrated. I don't hate her, but it's as if she's not capable to, of listening to me over her own thoughts. I sigh to myself. All I can do is accept that's how she is. Yeah, I think she's obsessed, addicted to her books, like me being addicted to anime girls, really. And to Japan overall. <laughs> But not like her, you know? I'm not doing like, Hey, I'm a weebo! No, I don't do this sort of stuff. I'm not like Yuri, okay? Okay, so we showed it to Yuri. Her reaction was pretty weird, though. <laughs> not gonna lie. Okay, I'm gonna show it to Natsuki, even though she's gonna be angry, probably. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Aren't you supposed to be bad at this? Is that a compliment? No, I mean, you know. Natsuki struggles to find the words she wants. I just expected a lot less after what you showed me yesterday. That's all. Well, I guess I just got lucky with this one. Yeah, exactly. You just got lucky, you know. Don't get used to it. You won't always manage to write poems this cute, I mean. I mean, well written. No, oh, I mean... Ah, so that's how it is. My poem is cute? No! Why are you smiling? It's not like I like cute things. Natsuki shows my poem back towards me. Huh? Reading it again, I decided that it's not so great after all. It's too cute and doki doki. <laughs> she doesn't like cute things even though Natsuki is cute herself. <laughs> Why? It will only impress you know girls who like those kinds of things. <laughs> For some reason Natsuki is incredibly easy to see through. Well anyway, you're gonna read mine now, right? Judging by your tastes, you'll probably like it a lot. You'll probably learn something too. Don't forget who the real pro is. Amy likes spiders, you know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, Wrigley. Hairy and ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried to not let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. 
What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. Doesn't matter if she, wa she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Oh, she's <laughs> smirking. <laughs> she's smirking. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward from this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant joke. Do you know people who like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, so look forward to it. Okay, so yeah, Natsuki often is mad at me and unhappy, as I said in earlier episodes. Okay, so I'm gonna show it to Sayori last. So, Monica, here we go. Hi again, Yorkfield. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're ha applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Wanna share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. Oh, that's kind of exaggerating it. <laughs> yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then too. I'm not like unapproachable or anything, am I? Ah, uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, pursing. Red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, pursing, sign, cuisine. Tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Loads me. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote nothing. All of this is blank, but she wrote load me all the way. <laughs> okay. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <sighs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if we don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about though. Uh, 
Sometimes asking what a poem is isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll, feel, you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game? What? Oh my god, okay, you know what? I'm gonna save it immediately. Yes. Return. Okay. Wow. Why did Monica say that? Okay, she's starting to scare me. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Something unexpected? Oh my god, maybe the scary stuff is gonna come, guys. Uh, I'm afraid. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Uh, that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, I don't know what to say about Monica's advice, guys. Yorkfield, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh, I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. And yeah, I remember, guys, when Sayuri said, This is not a poem, this is a Yorkfield poem. And I really liked when she said that. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Ah! No way! Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Ah! Whoa, 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 whoa! Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you are a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. <laughs> I don't know if I understand. You never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. Ah, oh, hey! I'm not a kid, you know? Are you sure about, about that? that? Hmm, maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Yorkfield, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <sighs> Are you even listening to me anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Ah! Oh, I broke my pencil! Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being inattentive or her surrounding, she bumps right into me. Sorry! It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk beside her support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh? Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles. I puff off my scalp like the kid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little bones, little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave 
discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping, or scrapping, I don't know. I blow dust off my bottle caps, it doesn't feel like time elapsed, my empty shelf could use some more, my friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and in my come my friends. And they come in such a hurry, do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading or something. But I, all I hear is echo, 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 echo it's my, inside my head. She, that was not a poem, guys. That was a song for me. A story, a song. <laughs> we can make a song about this. Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost like kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Ah, thanks. I feel like... I feel like that was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing, writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Ah, uh, don't get a cat! Don't get a <laughs> She's gonna write for the rest of her life! <laughs> oh my god, she's addicted to writing! <laughs> Oh my god, Sayori, what have you got into? Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone would come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Oh, do we really have to do something with a festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a pro trip performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori is putting it all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't. You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayuri. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We are the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. 
If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we will be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feeling that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all takes is standing in the front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayuri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, Okay, fine. I guess I just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. I guess I don't really have a choice. Ah, that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death for me. <gasps> oh no, 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 you, we're going to practice reciting them in the front of each other. No way! Monica? This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in the front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Oh, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands, stands behind the podium. The title of the poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayuri looks amazed. Yuria has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. <coughs> Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica! Ah, uh, thank you very much. I was just hoping to get to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. Ah! Yuri is fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called... After image of a crimson eye, Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates, enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the railing fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Concealed, sorry. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we did not want to applaud for her, but we are caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. 
As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one is called My Mido. Ah, oh. ah, sorry I giggled. <laughs> Sayuri, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah, oh. try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in the front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best way. The best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayuri begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aim aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it comes from Sayori's voice almost give, gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to read more deeply into someone that I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Yorkfield liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you real nicely, but it might be that other poems you would, wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Ah, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Yorkfield. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Yorkfield lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get, over, get it over with but it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in the front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of convenience in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki be begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her, her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why? You're looking at me! Because you're presenting... Hmm... Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sore attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little enthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hoves back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in the front of other people? I mean, doing it in other front of people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be one the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Maybe sh make sure you pick the poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? 
I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too, it doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me feel really happy. Ah, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow and we'll have the weekend to, for to prepare. Monday is the big day. I can't wait. I can do this, I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayuri and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, ah, oh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Yorkfield, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, oh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Ah! What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot there. <laughs> well... Uh... <laughs> I don't know what to say, guys! Why? Why does Yuri want to walk home with me? Why? Uh... <laughs> I don't know what to say! No! I would still walk home with Sayori. Sayori? You will, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But... She's so beautiful and smart. Yeah, this is true, but... Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Yorkfield. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point of speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Thank you so much guys for watching this episode on DDRC. We'll be back in the next episode for the poem for the Literature Club, for the festival of the Literature Club, of the Doki Doki. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Stay safe, take care, peace, bye!